that we've been attempting to do over this last uh, number of months is create spaces in our service to continue to remind us who we are and the different people that have played very important roles within the ministry of Hope Covenant. And standing to my right, your left, is Barb Scavel. And she is the chair of the spiritual care team, formerly known as the elders. And I thought we'd spend five good minutes with Barb, and then Barb is going to uh, give a presentation as well uh, this morning. And so, Barb, last weekend, uh, we met as a bunch of leaders, and one of the things that we heard is, could you remind me again, what is the spiritual care team, and what is it that they do? So I thought we'd take that question and present it and give you an opportunity to kind of give us a little bit of a reminder of what is it that your team does? Isn't on, is it? Okay. <laughs> spiritual care team um, says it right there. We want to care for the spiritual needs of the members and regular attenders of Hope Covenant. And that involves, you want me to tell you what that involves, right? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, prayer, encouragement, support, any way that we can help with the needs of the congregation when they are in crisis, when they're sick, in the hospital, um, just lonely. Uh, need a friend, want to be listened to, or even want to know something about coming to a relationship with Jesus Christ. So we do that through visitation. We do that through calling. Uh, During the COVID period, um, we uh, organized the group called Care Connectors, and that was the way we connected at that time, and it was really worked well. It was 15 to 17 people that volunteered to be a care connector. And every one of you, if you were a regular attender or a member, were on a list, somebody's list. And they called you once a week uh, at first. And then it led up, you know, as we went along. So that was the way we connected during COVID. And uh, we're hoping to do more connecting in person. We couldn't visit in the hospital or anything at that time. So Mm -hmm. that's... uh, one of the, I wanted to give some examples, did, or did you want to ask me another question? Go ahead. Yep, <laughs> yep. You take it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'd rather give examples than him ask me a question. Um, <laughs> we, a couple of examples are, we uh, visited Liz Keith. Uh, the whole team went to visit her and pray with her, and she was a real delight to visit with. Uh, also, we went to visit Andy Anderson uh, when he was, first time he was in, Uh, the rehab center, and we were outside of his window. We talked to him on the phone and then prayed for him right outside his window. He's on the first floor, so that worked well. And another thing is we went to Ken and Julie Johnson's uh, this past Easter to share communion with them on Good Friday. So things like that. We'd love to come to homes to visit. We'd love more opportunities like that. Yep. And last week we had an opportunity at the end of the service to give people a space if they wanted to do more processing and we spread you out around the room. So those are the kind of things um, that you guys do really, really well. And when we gather together, and again, I'm just kind of there uh, as a presence, and I'm just always impressed at how seriously you take the, the spiritual well-being of this church. And you lead every meeting with devotionals, you spend lots of time in prayer, but could you introduce your team to us just so we can get uh, kind of faces and names? They're up there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Scott Bjorklund. Sharon Terry, Marty Toole, myself, Keith Olson, and Suzanne Isaacson. And Suzanne and Marty have come just recently come on the, the team. So they're new members, and we said thank you to Sandy Dopkins and Bob Koopsky because they went off the team. And I know that you've said a little bit of this, but as we think about 2021 and 2022 coming up in front of us, are there some ways that you hope to continue to engage Hope Covenant as a spiritual care team. You mentioned a couple things, but I wonder if there's anything else that you wanted to share there. Well, we are exploring ways to do that. Um, Since we still can't go in the hospital, we would like to go into homes more often and meet with you if you have a prayer need. Uh, We also want to be more visible like this and available. So any of these people on the screen, or on your screen, you can, you know, call them if you need, have a need, a prayer need, or if it goes on the prayer vine, like on the Connect card, that was a question, too, asked on Saturday. If it goes on that Connect card, those cards come to us if you say you don't want it on the prayer vine. It still comes to the spiritual care team and the staff to pray for you. So that's another way to get a prayer request through. Yeah. 
So one of the things I'd love for us to uh, kind of restart, and again, COVID kind of put a, a stop to that for a while, is that if you know you have a surgery that is coming up, we, and you're here at church, we'd love to spend five minutes just praying with you, even as you leave yeah. here and go into the week where you might be having some sort of surgery or operation. Yeah, we did that many times with people before surgeries, before COVID. Yep. Uh, and if you ask Keith Olson and myself, we think this is the best job in the church because <laughs> we get to talk to people, listen to people, and pray for them. And it's just, it's just very rewarding. We just love it. So 